In this video, I want to provide an introduction to method of moments estimators and generalized method of moments estimators. So firstly, we're going to talk about how these estimators actually work. Then what we're going to talk about at the end is the benefits of these particular types of estimators. So the idea in method of moments estimators is that we have some sort of population. And within that population, we know from theory that there are some defined conditions. An example of a condition might be something like, in the population, the expected level of some random variable x is equal to mu, some parameter. The way these estimators actually work is via something which is known as the analogy principle. So the analogy principle says that if we can come up with a similar quantity within our sample to that which is in the population, then perhaps we can use that sample equivalent condition to help us to estimate parameters. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to come up with a sample equivalent of this population moment condition. Now, of course, this is just a moment condition because I haven't specified the distribution. All I've done is I've specified the first moment of that distribution, the fact that the expected value of x is equal to mu. So how do we actually come up with a sample equivalent of this population moment condition? Well, the way in which we do it is by noting that the expectations operator, the expected value of x, it's really the sort of equivalent of taking an infinite sample of observations, so x1, x2, sort of continuing on forever, and taking the average of all of those observations. So this is in the limit as n goes to infinity. We know that this is actually the case because the weak law of large numbers tells us that there is this equivalence between this population moment condition and this sort of infinite sample mean. So perhaps this highlights that what we could do is we could just replace the population moment condition, the expectation of our random variable x, by a sample equivalent, which is just the sample mean. So we replace it by 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi. And in method of moments and generalized method of moments, that's exactly what we do. So in this sort of first condition here, we replace our population moment condition by our sample sort of equivalent, and that gives us an estimate of mu, which we're going to call mu hat, which is equal to 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi, in other words, the sample mean. Okay, so that's the case if we had just one parameter and one population moment condition, so that would actually be an example of method of moments. How about if we have another population moment condition? So we have that the expected value of x squared is equal to sigma squared plus mu squared. How do we then, via the analogy principle, come up with an analogous property within our sample? Well, it's simple really. All we do is we replace, in this case, the expected value of x squared. We just replace that by 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi squared. So in this case, we get that we have an estimator for sigma hat squared plus mu hat squared and that's just equal to 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi squared. So this highlights something in particular. In both method of moments and generalized method of moments estimation, if we have some sort of population moment condition which has an expectations operator and then some function of our random variable x, then all we do via the analogy principle is replace this with our sample equivalent for our estimator. So then we just get 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of xi. So the idea is, in all cases, we whenever we see an expectations operator in the population condition, we just replace it by 1 over n times the sum in our sample. So in both of these cases, we have two parameters that we're trying to estimate. So we've got, in this case, the parameter mu and sigma squared, and we've got two population moment conditions. And because of that, because we've got two equations and two population moment conditions, and hence two sample equivalents, our sort of solutions are identified. In other words, we have exact solutions for our estimators of the parameters mu hat and sigma hat squared. 
But what happens if we have another population moment condition? So here we have a sort of third population moment condition, which is that the expectation of x to the power 4 is actually equal to 3 sigma to the power 4. Again, we can, via the analogy principle and via that which we just sort of discussed before, all we need to do is we replace the expectations operator by 1 over n times the sum. So then we just get that 3 sigma hat to the power 4 is equal to 1 over n times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi to the power 4. So notice in this case we still only have two parameters but we have three equations that we'd like to satisfy. And we know from sort of basic algebra that if we have more equations than we have degrees of freedom there is no way that we can exactly satisfy these equations. And this is the case in GMM. The idea is that we have more moment conditions m than we have parameters we're trying to estimate k. So this circumstance defines what is known as GMM, whereas before when we had the number of parameters equal to the number of moment conditions, as we did when we only had two moment conditions and two parameters, this is what is known as method of moment estimation. So in GMM, what we have to do is we have to come up with a way as getting as close to po as possible to satisfying each of these three equations via choosing, in this example, mu hat and sigma hat squared. I'm not going to go into how we do that in this video, just to say that that's how GMM works. So I hope that that's provided some context as to how method of moments and generalized method of moments work. Now I want to talk briefly about the benefits of these type of estimation strategies. The first benefit is that there is no need to actually specify the exact likelihood for this situation. So what do I mean by that? we didn't actually need to specify the distribution within our population. All we needed to do was to specify some moments of that distribution. And that's a benefit in circumstances where the sort of distribution is unknown or it's analytically quite intractable. A second benefit of method of moments and generalized method of moments is that because we haven't specified an exact distribution or we haven't specified a distribution at all, it is actually robust to distributional assumptions. Uh, in particular, it is robust to things like heteroscedasticity, this type of estimation strategy. Another benefit, as we've seen here, is that it deals with non-linearities in terms of our sort of moment conditions in a very simple way, and hence they're not a problem, unlike some other estimation strategies. And finally, I should say that this type of estimation strategies is in general consistent.